Hello everyone, my name is Manuel Ocaña. My presentation will focus on two dialectical behavior therapy skills that will help deal with emotion regulation. Dialectical behavior therapy, or DBT, is something that I have really enjoyed, mainly because it has taught me so many different skills, and I hope you'll learn something today as well. I think of emotional regulation very similar to cooking a delicious meal. Perhaps some arroz con pollo y plátano frito. Now as I'm preparing my mother's signature dish, I taste and notice something is missing. I add a dash of salt and a pinch of pepper. It's good, but still not the flavor that I remember eating weekly as a child. I go back, this time adding a squeeze of lime and some traditional Panamanian hot sauce. As I take another spoonful, a feeling of nostalgia arrives. The food is spot on. I share this to not only encourage everyone to try some authentic Panamanian cuisine, but to demonstrate that, just like in cooking, you have some control over your emotions. In the same way that you decide if a dish needs more or less spice, you decide if an emotion needs a particular skill. No one else is cooking for you. You are the chef. Again, this video aims to focus on emotion regulation. Now, emotion regulation is the ability to control or influence which emotions you have, when you have them, and how you experience and express them. One of the first steps in changing unwanted emotion is to check the facts. Sometimes, this is all that is needed. When the emotion does not fit the facts, we can practice acting opposite to our emotion. When the emotion fits the facts and the situation is the problem, we can then try problem solving. Checking the facts is a basic strategy in dialectical behavior therapy. When checking the facts, we are checking whether the emotion fits the situation and whether the intensity of the emotion fits the situation. See, we often react to our thoughts and interpretations of an event rather than to the actual facts of the event. For example, a person who believes that a loved one has died in a car accident will feel deep sadness and grief, even if the information the person was given was incorrect and the loved one did in fact not die. Changing beliefs and assumptions about a situation to fit the facts can help change your emotional reactions to it. But this requires you to first check the facts. Why check the facts? Well, our thoughts and interpretations of situations and events can set off painful emotions. Our emotions can affect what we think about events and how to react to thoughts. Believing that our thoughts are absolute truths can be a recipe for disaster. Therefore, knowing the facts is essential for solving problems. Moreover, examining our thoughts and checking the facts can change our emotion. The next step is how to check the facts. For example, let's say it's late at night and we hear a creaking sound in the house. After hearing the sound, we begin to believe that someone is breaking into the house. Well, first, we must ask, what is the emotion I want to change? In this example, the emotion is fear. What is the event prompting my emotion? Here, it would be the creaking sound. What are my interpretations, thoughts, and assumptions about the event? Well, I'm interpreting that someone must be breaking in since there was a creaking sound made. Am I assuming a threat? Yes, if someone is breaking in, we very well might encounter danger. What is the catastrophe and does my emotion and its intensity fit the facts? In this scenario, we have catastrophized the simple sound of a creak in the floor into someone breaking and entering into our house, which could lead to harm. The fact is, we heard a sound and we have assumed danger on that basis. Here, 
Our middle of the night thinking prompted us to catastrophize. These emotions may not fully fit the facts. Emotions function to solve problems of common situations that we encounter. Let's look at fear. Fear functions to keep us safe. This is done by urging us to escape danger through avoiding, running away, or hiding from anything that threatens us. These responses are universal. Ultimately, checking the facts can help reduce unwanted emotions. It is important to note that sometimes some emotions do fit the facts. This skill helps us in making that decision. If the emotion fits the facts and the intensity fits the facts, we need to ask our wise mind if it is effective to act on our emotion. If so, go for it. When emotions do not fit the facts of a situation or do not lead to effective behavior, acting opposite to these emotions will change the emotions if this is done repeatedly and all the way. Therefore, opposite action is just that acting opposite to the emotional urge to do or say something. There are many effective treatments that already ask clients to reverse the expression and action components of their problem emotions. An example of this is exposure-based treatment. This treatment involves doing the opposite of avoiding and escaping feared events and is an effective treatment for anxiety disorders. This is also an effective treatment for anger. This involves learning to identify the cues to frustration and or anger and then leaving the situation to cool down rather than going on the attack. So, when can opposite action work best? When knowing the facts about a situation does not work to change your emotional responses, then opposite action can be effective. It can also be effective when your emotion or its intensity is not justified by the situation. Emotions are not justified when they do not fit the facts of the actual situation. For example, you were told a person said mean and untrue things about you when in fact they did not. And this then prompts anger. In order to do opposite action, first, we must identify and name the emotion that we want to change. Let's again use the example of the floor creaking during the middle of the night. The emotion that we want to change is fear. The second step requires us to check the facts. Ask yourself, is the emotion a reasonable response to the situation in question? In the example, we are experiencing the type of thinking that occurs when we wake up at night with worries and catastrophizing thoughts about our lives. When we wake up in the morning, we often wonder how we could worry so much and believe such catastrophic thoughts. Next, we want to identify and describe our action urges. Pay attention to your impulses, your desires, and cravings. Focus on what you feel like doing or saying. Ask yourself, what do I feel like doing? What do I want to say? In this example, we feel like acting on these catastrophic thoughts. Next. We ask wise mind, if I act on my urge, will it make things better or worse? Will acting on my emotion solve the problem I am faced with? If the answer is no, move to the next step. If you've gotten this far in the process, you have decided that your emotion is not justified by the facts or not effective for your goals. So you should do the opposite of your action urges. 
Let your opposite action do the work for you. Try not to suppress your emotional experiences or feelings. When you do opposite action, do it all the way. This means opposite posture, facial expression, thinking what you say, and how you say it. So going back to the example, in the middle of the night, it can be helpful simply to say to ourselves, these are the middle of the night thoughts, I'm going to ignore them until the morning. It's important to note that halfway opposite action does not work. For example, let's say I'm feeling nervous to attend a party and shy about meeting new people. Opposite action would tell me to go to the party and fully engage with everyone there. Doing opposite action halfway would be more me going to the party but standing in the corner all night and not engaging. Finally, you need to act opposite in a situation long enough for it to work. That is, keep doing it until you notice your emotion coming down in intensity even just a little bit. For example, if you are anxious when talking in groups, it may take a lot of time talking in friendly groups to reduce anxiety about it. That's also true of people who do public speaking. It's usual to feel very anxious at first, and then over time and many practices, you start to feel much more comfortable. In conclusion, emotion regulation is a lot like cooking. The more we practice, the better we get. I appreciate everyone's attention and time during this presentation. I thank you. And I hope you all have a grateful day. Take care.